here we are again talking about how to form participles. Okay, the first chunk of them are going to be active participles. Just to look ahead, we're going to do middle and passive, and then um, uh, only passive and only middle participles. Okay, um, so so the first thing to realize is that in addition to voice, that is active, middle, and passive, participles have um, um, aspect. Okay, we're going to learn present, how to form present, future, aorist, and perfect participles, all of them active in this first chunk. Okay, um, and, and, and the key concept is that even the future, so-called future participle, doesn't have tense. Okay, it's, it's got a modal significance. It, it's, it's a rem remnant and an aspectual form. So it looks, if you look at the book on the pages, um, there are pages 204 through 208 and, um, and uh, with the forms of these, okay, it looks overwhelming, okay, but let's not get overwhelmed. What we're basically talking about is you're going to learn how to form, if you want to think of it in the maximum way, five part, five adjectives, okay? Um, and, you know, once you, with remember the rule about adjectives, once you know the the, the nominative, singular, masculine, feminine, and neuter, and the genitive forms, you can generate the rest of the paradigm, right? If you know you have an agathos type adjective, and it's agathos, agathe, agathon, and, uh, and the genitive is agathu, you can do all the rest if you know your endings, right? These are, these are th adjectives which are third declension in the masculine and neuter, and first declension um, uh, uh, forms in the feminine gender. In the feminine gender, they're thalata type adjectives. In other words, they end in a short alpha in the nominative and the accusative, but they have the long etas in, in the singular and long etas in the other forms, but the plurals of the feminines are the same as all feminine nouns. So these are a, a, a mixed set of, of uh, adjectives. You know how to form adjectives. You know how to tra uh, translate the basic notion of adjectives. We'll talk more about the specifics of what they mean uh, after we get the forms down. But basically, we're learning five new adjectives, okay? You think of them as vocabulary items. It's more, not more than that. And we've tried to boil down the, the formation rules, and you'll see that there's a remarkable systematic consistency to the way they work, okay? Which will help you to remember them and recognize them when you see them, okay? So let's get started. Well, you see, the, the first thing we're going to look at is how to form present active participles. So the rule is that you start with the first principal part. Uh, you know, for luo, it's luo, okay? And what you do is you remove the personal ending and you add an adjectival suffix, which has three genders, own, usa, on, okay? We've already seen third declension nouns that end in on, like geron, okay? Um, and um, the, the neuter one, on, is what you would expect of, a, of an own uh, uh, masculine form. Uh, but these adjectives, they all have three genders, okay? All these participles have three genders. So we've also given you the gender of the own, usa, on nominatives. It's ontos, okay? So that means that that's the base. The O-N-T is the base for all the, the creation of all the other forms. Ontos, uses, that tells you that it's the thalata type feminine, and then ontos again for the neuter. So once you have that, you know how to do dativs and singulars and, and accusative singulars. That's on di, u se with an ada on eros subscript and on and so forth. And then accusative singulars and the plurals on tos, u sai, on ta. Okay, you know all these things um, because you've learned your personal endings. Even you you know you, you it's it's this learning this going over this lesson is a way of confirming your knowledge. Of the personal of the case endings of the first and the second and the third declensions, okay, um, but mainly the second, the first and the third declensions, because all of these participles tend to be a mixture. So um, we also have given you the date of plural form because there's a contraction involved there. What was originally ant si o n t s i becomes usi. So in the case of all the participles, we're going to show you. We're going to show you the data floral form so you you realize what it is when you see it. Luus it, okay. Look at our look at our example. Luon, luusa, luon. That's the nominative forms of the participle in three genders. 
Luantos, we're mixing in an accent there somehow. Luantos, Luuses and Luantos, those are their genitives. From those you can generate all the rest. Luuses is the dative plural. That looks like a third person plural present indicative. That looks like they are releasing, right? So you got to be careful, but it'll it'll there'll be ways in which you can tell whether it's a finite verb or a participle in the dative plural. Yeah, so that's what police plural. What else does this look like? Articles will help uh, you with yes, this. Yes, exactly. For example, because article adjectives have have articles in front of them and they have nouns that they agree with, right? Mm -hmm. And stuff like that. So there's there gonna be lots of cues. All right. Once we have the present participle, then remembering how you make futures, look at how you make a future participle. You start with a future principal part, minus the personal ending. And to that, you add on, usa, on. And the genitive is antas, uses, antas. And the dative plural is use. Okay, so it's the same thing, but there's the s, that's the sign of the future for most Greek verbs. So that gives you not luon, luusa, but, and luon, but luson, lususa, luon, luson. Lusantos, lususes, lusantos is the is the genitive, and the dative plural is lususe. So really, the first form, the present participle and the future participle, are only different from each other in the sign of the future, the s. Okay. So now let's move to the aorist participles. Remember, now we have two kinds of aorists. We have first aorists and second aorists. So here's how you make the first aorist, the things that we started with, okay? You start with the aorist principal part, for example, for luo is elusa, and you remove the augment, right? Because participles are, have aspect and not tense, we have to ha remove tense markers, okay? So there's no augment in, in, uh, in the aorist form of participles, okay? So that gives you elusa, and we're saying also to remove the sa ending. Because I think the way, best way to think of it is that the participle ending includes the SA, that's the sign of the aorist. So if you remove the SA from ELUSA and the augment, you get LU, okay? In effect, you're back at the first principal mm -hmm. part. And to that, you add SAS, SASA, SAN. The genitive is SANTOS, SASE, SANTOS. Looks familiar, doesn't it? Looks a lot like ON, USA, ON, right? Third declension uh, forms in the masculine and neuter. Uh, first declension forms in the feminine gender. Okay, the endings are the same. Um, the dative plural in this case is not usi but sasi. Okay, it's s a n t plus s i. The n and the t disappear, and you get sasi and a long alpha. Okay, so there's our example verb lusas lusasa lusan lusantos lusases lusantos and the dative plural lusasi. Okay. We're going to pause. So um, now we're going to look at the forms of the second aorist participle, and this is going to look familiar to you. What you do is you start with the aorist principal part. So in our sample verb lepo, the aorist principal part would be elepon. You remove the augment, the e at the beginning, and the personal ending, the on, and you add on, usa, on. Notice there's an accent on the on, usa, on. It's the, in the second aorist principle, participles, rather, the accent is on the thematic vowel. And maybe you're starting to see that when there is a thematic vowel in a participle, and in the first aorist, for example, there's none, the thematic vowel is always omicron, okay? Um, in participles, it's omicron, and infinitives, which are the corresponding thing, believe it or not, in the Greek verbal system, Participles and infinitives are in complementary distribution. So infinitives have an E thematic vowel, participles have an O. Okay, um, so there are the forms of the nominative, le pon, le pus, le pon. In the genitive, it's just like the present participle and the future participle forms, le pontos, le puses, le pontos, and the dative plural, likewise, le puse. So if we think back, okay, basically you've learned on, usa, on. If you've got on, usa, on in your mind, it works for the present participles, the future participles, and the second eras participles. So it's really one adjective, if you want, and a formation rule that differs for each. And then we've learned the sa, 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 san, santos, which is very similar, okay, endings for the first aorist, right? Le pon is different, but is almost identical, but it differs in the accent, which is not on the on the um, thematic vowel in the present participle, um, as well as the vowel in the stem, the EIP, as opposed to the IP.
All right, so let's look at perfect participles. We wind this up, okay? In the perfect participle, similarly, you start with the perfect principal part, which is the fourth one, and you remove the personal ending, okay? So from leluka, you get leluk, and then you add on this ending, os, wea, ui alpha, os. Again, that ui alpha is a thalata type, uh, second declension, first declension um, adjectival ending. So um, the os and the os, however, are third declension endings, but instead of having the nt ending that you see in on, usa, on, you have an ot ending, which is what gives us the os in the nominative instead of the on. So we've got, we've got autos is the genitive, weos, the feminine genitive, autos is the masculine, weos is the feminine, and then autos again is the neuter form. The dative plural form from ot plus s is osi. So all the other forms in the masculine and neuter are built on that ot suffix to, to the perfect stem, mm -hmm. and then you add on the endings of the third declension masculine and neuter uh, um, case for the masculine and neuter cases. So there's our example noun, lelukos, because the leluka has a kappa suffix for the perfect. Um, lelukos, leluquia, lelukos. Notice that the reduplication remains in place because the reduplication is not a tense marker, it's an aspect number marker, rather. So lelukos, leluquia, lelukos, lelukotos, leluquias, lelukotos, and the dative plural is lelukosi. Okay, so that's the whole set. Um, we've learned basically on usa on, as sa 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 san, and os we are os. Really, it boils down to three adjectives. Okay, mm -hmm. and you can remember them. You can learn them and learn them fast. Great.